Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Parajay Guhatakutta, who and his co-author have recently published a story on Ambani's, shall we say, hidden income or shall we say undisclosed accounts, which have come to light because of the earlier the HSBC whistleblowing and further to that the income tax authorities investigation on this issue. Parunja, the story that you have done for News Click seems to indicate that, uh, shall we say, tax havens have played an important role in Reliance Empire? Undoubtedly. What this article highlights is how members of the Ambani family, individuals closely associated with the Reliance Group and their associated used a very complex structure of corporate entities across the globe in tax havens like St. Lucia, in British Virgin Islands, the Antilles Islands in the Netherlands and so on and so forth to essentially hide the manner in which an estimated 2,100 crore rupees, which uh, if you sort of uh, convert that into US dollars at the exchange rate prevailing at that juncture, which is really around 2004 to 2006. This is soon after Dhirubhai Ambani passed away in July 2002. Now, that's about 470 odd million that's dollars. That's correct, about 472 million US dollars. So, what is what they did was they used this very complex structure to conceal income from the Indian tax authorities. Now, bits and pieces of this story have appeared. It, first, it was Ar Arvind K. Jiwal and Prashant Bhushan who disclosed this uh, at a press conference in Delhi after the whistleblower from HSBC's Geneva branch, Herb Falciani, had uh, disclosed this information. Then That had about 700 Indian accounts that's mentioned in correct, that. That's correct. Then this information was passed on by the French government to the Indian government. And thereafter, after Falciani's material uh, was made public, the Indian Express, as part of a global sort of uh, uh, journalism network, they went quite deep into it. But they couldn't get the whole story. And when I wrote the article for News Click, I said, here is the full story. But after I wrote the story, my sources informed me, no, that's not the full story. There's more to be told. Now, the story, from what I understand, is that a front set of companies, Motec Software being one of them, which is headed by Anutandan, was, was headed, headed was by headed Anutandan by, yes. before she resigned and became a member of parliament. But this, this company was in some sense the front for a lot of these activities. But more important than that, in terms of tax issues, it is that under Indian law, Indian citizens are supposed to disclose whatever financial holdings they have abroad. Correct. And that is the violation that is that has taken place. And that's what the Income Tax Department has really filed notices on. Is that that's right? correct. Absolutely correct. If you are a citizen of India, you hold an Indian passport and you have corporate entities or other entities registered in India, then your foreign holdings, any kinds of assets, financial assets or other kinds of assets, need to be disclosed to the Indian tax authorities. Now, in this case, it appears or it has been alleged by the income tax department, but this, these assets were not disclosed to the tax authorities. And that, that's not all. One more point. What was interesting is that the income tax department, after the French government came up with all this information that had been provided to the French government by Falciani, what happened essentially was the they started what are called reassessment orders against these companies. Because what had happened was that the these reassessment proceedings took place because the accounts were supposed to have been all closed. And finally, when the order came, which was in 2014, pertaining to assessment years that were about eight years earlier, what was interesting is, even as these reassessment proceedings were going on, the company, Motec Software's representatives, didn't inform the income tax department 
that they had closed down that company. But can they close down the company without the permission of the income tax authority since proceedings now are that, on? That's and secondly, uh, should that company would have been allowed to close down anyway? Now that's the, that's the interesting part of the information that I have disclosed in that news click article. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs, the registrar of, registrar of companies, deregistered this company and informed the income tax department. But it seems the income tax department had conveniently forgotten to take notice of this. So it's a kind of and oops, thereafter, we forgot. <laughs> oops, we forgot kind of question. And thereafter, they moved court. But that's another story. You'll have to wait for that story. How this all happened. And, and so that is truly uh, that one wing of the government typically, of course, doesn't know what the other hand and other wing of them. But this was a particularly interesting case where the Ministry of Corporate Affairs informs the income tax department. But I think also the company concerned has a, an obligation to report to the Ministry of Company Affairs that we are, have this thing pending against us and uh, without which actually they cannot wind down the company. This you have to inform the Ministry of uh, Company Affairs or Registrar of Company Affairs that there is something pending against us. This is precisely the point on which the income tax department has moved court. Okay, coming back to the other issue, that it is not that there is a tax notice regarding unearned income for these accounts abroad, because we do not know what, what income they did or didn't earn, though the, obviously the figures are there in the HSBC papers. What is really the issue is under law, they should have disclosed that they had these foreign holdings, Correct. which is what they didn't do. Correct. And that's a charge against them. And they have Absolutely. to explain now, where did this income come from and how much expenditure do they have? And therefore, what are the implications of these holdings in terms of the tax liability in India? Is that right? Yeah, absolutely correct. You've analyzed it perfectly. Okay. Coming back to the other issue, you know, but something which is forgotten uh, in India, that, okay, here are these amounts which are there. Compared to the size of our money holdings and all, they don't seem to be astronomical. It's a very all, small, small part. It, it's as, as they would say, Peanuts. In Hindi, ha, mumfali ka paisa bhi isme nahi aayega. Peanuts. The question is, what is the role the tax havens play in the affairs of companies like Ambani's? Now, we had, for instance, the KG Basin issue where the CAG had made various strictures on the kind of, shall we say, expenditure, supposedly, that uh, uh, the uh, Reliance had uh, done. In, in the KG Basin case, they had a lot of, for instance, they had drilling ships, they had drilling expenditures, they had hired various things. Absolutely. Let me remind you of two very famous statements made by our Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. He says, na khaunga, na khane duka. Neither will I accept bribes, uh, nor will I pay, let, uh, let, I will let others, you know, pay bribes. He also made another statement, which it says before the elections that he would bring black all the black money which Indians had stashed away outside India. And he arrived at a calculation that he would be able to distribute 15 lakh rupees to every poor family in India. Subsequently, of course, the BJP president, Mr. Amit Shah, described this as Chunawi Jumla, means it as a wild exaggeration and, and uh, he, I mean it was nothing near the, near the truth. But the short point is the point that you have made. Indians for many years have been illegally, surreptitiously taking away money. And this process is facilitated by tax havens, no tax or low tax jurisdictions. On the KG gas basin, I have a book. I also have another book written with Shinzani Jain, which is called Thin Dividing Line, India, Mauritius, and Global Illicit Financial Flows. And these two books seek to document how this entire process happens. Essentially, across the world, there are about 90 odd so-called tax havens. And some of these tax havens are within countries like the state of Delaware in the US. But you know, the interesting part of a lot of this is that each financial area, as it were, you have the European Union, that has its tax havens much smaller than the Brits. Brits have the most, 
as we said, because they have a much bigger colonial empire than others. So they could locate it in different parts of the world. And they can also talk about it being somewhat, being independent of the, of, of, they're all independent countries apparently. Yes, they're all supposed to be sovereign, countries. independent sovereign nation states. So, so all of this, the expertise has been provided, interestingly enough, by Swiss banks and, and the city and, of and, London. And, These are the two and, ones. And what I thought provided. I could add to what you're saying, Interestingly, especially after the Great Recession of 2008 and even before that, the OECD, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, which is essentially a club of some of the most developed countries in the world, they themselves have been very concerned. And they have an initiative calling for greater transparency. Uh, it's called BEPS, Base Erosion and Profit Shifting, where large corporations, including some of the biggest IT companies, Google, Google yeah, Apple. Apple, and how they have used these jurisdictions, these low-tax, no-tax jurisdictions, popularly called tax havens, to avoid paying taxes. And, 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 and the dividing line between quote-unquote legal forms of tax avoidance, which uh, accountants and lawyers say good tax planning. So even if it's legal, the issue of ethics arises. But then the dividing line between a legal form of tax avoidance and illegal form of tax evasion, which includes money laundering and money moving at high velocity across various tax havens, which is what the Ambani case is all about, even the OECD today says this is bad for the economy of the world. It is widening inequalities. I, I'd like to add two things to it. One is what's the difference between tax avoidance and illegal tax, uh, shall we say? Evasion. Evasion. It's having good lawyers and good accountants. That's Absolutely one. correct. So that, that is one part of it. And, and the second part of it, it's, it, it's interesting that a lot of people have said one of the reasons for Brexit is because Britain was very unhappy with the European Union, or at least British finance capital was very unhappy with the threat in the European Union of tax avoidance being limited and therefore tax havens to be brought under some kind of control. This is supposed to be one of the this is a very for, Yes, indeed. A very, this is very a very strong interesting argument point for view. Brexit. Just like after reading the article that uh, NewsClick published, written by me and Abhir Dashgupto, uh, Prashant Bhushan sent out a tweet wondering whether some of this money was from uh, alleged <laughs> invoicing fiddles in the Krishna Godavari Basin, you know, which on which uh, a report of the Controller and Auditor General already exists. So, so this is part of the way finance capital has been working and it's reached such levels that even within the establishment, as I said, the OECD, there is a lot of concern about this. So, Apple and Google and Microsoft may use Ireland, but the others are unhappy. Ki EU is saying, should you be allowing this kind of thing? Because what is happening? At the end, you are depriving independent sovereign nation states on what they consider is their legitimate share of tax revenue, which is meant for healthcare and education and roads and electricity and water, etc., etc. And, and that's not all. Because it benefits the rich, you are actually contributing the growing inequalities across the globe and also in India. We are not here arguing that what Ambani did with K KG Basin is illegal. Because unfortunately, what they have done is under international financing today being done by all big companies. So at the most that we can catch reliance is on not disclosing this, which is what is exactly the case in the income tax department, that you should have disclosed that you're holding such foreign assets abroad. Can I recount a little anecdote? The infamous gangster of Chicago, Al Capone, you know, was accused of all kinds of crimes from trafficking in women to illegal gambling, you name it. And killing people. And finally, why was he arrested? How was he arrested? Income tax department, the internal revenue service of the US government finally got him. So here is the issue really, that the much, the much bigger issue 
is really the existence of tax havens, which allow for global capital to escape the tax net, as you have said, and allows, therefore, what would have been otherwise redistributed as a part of taxation, allows it not to be taxed and therefore increasing the inequalities globally. Yes. This, is, this is the crux of what we see, is the role of tax havens in the larger picture of the global economy. And essentially what we see, irrespective of what they did or didn't do, that seems to be also the picture in this particular story that you have done, that this seems to be the role that these tax havens play. And at the end of it, we can only catch people for non-disclosure of foreign holdings rather than what they have done. Because essentially the big fish, shall we say, the European Union, the United Kingdom, the United States are all into this very heavily. Okay, thank you so much. I completely agree with your analysis. I hope that some of those who are uh, watching the two of us converse will go and read the article in NewsClick. And I must apologize to them at this juncture itself. I told them, here's the full story. No, the full story has not yet been told. There's more to be told. Thank you very much, Paranjaya, to be with us. And we hope that we will see further disclosures, not only of this, but of other uh, investigative journalism that you and your colleagues are doing. This is all the time we have today for News Click. Do keep watching News Click and also visit our YouTube page.